NASA is producing oxygen on Mars. On board the Perseverance rover is an experiment called MOXIE, which takes in the Martian atmosphere and is able to convert some of it into oxygen. In this video, we will be talking about how exactly this experiment works and how it might be able to scale up in the future for further expeditions to the Red Planet. So let's talk about that. First of all, what does MOXIE even stand for? And much like many experiments or instruments as a part of NASA missions, it is an acronym, standing for the Mars Oxygen In Situ Resource Utilization Experiment. Now, I know that's quite a mouthful, so we'll be referring to it as MOXIE. Now, the term MOXIE also refers to something of character or determination, which is fitting for its kind, since it's a technology demonstrator trying to create oxygen on Mars for the first time. To understand why MOXIE is so important, let's compare the Earth's atmosphere to Mars's atmosphere. Earth's atmosphere is composed of 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen, about 1% argon, and 0.04% carbon dioxide. Whereas Mars's atmosphere is very different, having carbon dioxide taking up 95% of its atmosphere, whereas 3% is nitrogen, 1.6% is argon, and the rest is small quantities of oxygen, methane, water vapor, and a few other molecules. So we can see that Mars has a lot of carbon dioxide in its atmosphere. But there's another key difference, and this is in how thin Mars's atmosphere is. On average at the surface of Mars, the atmospheric pressure is 150 times thinner than at the surface of Earth. Now I say on average because it changes quite a bit depending on the season of Mars, but you can learn more about that in another video. The composition of Mars's atmosphere is one of the key challenges to sending humans to Mars. Even if we did compress the Martian atmosphere, it's primarily carbon dioxide and we wouldn't be able to breathe it, right? Well, technically we can't breathe carbon dioxide or we would quickly suffocate, but we can convert the carbon dioxide. CO2 or carbon dioxide is just one carbon and two oxygen atoms. So let's say we were to steal one of the oxygen atoms from each carbon dioxide molecule, then we could create our own oxygen gas which is exactly what the MOXIE experiment is doing on Mars, following a procedure called electrochemistry. But we'll get to the details of how exactly it does that a little bit later in the video. Now you might be wondering if MOXIE has already created oxygen, and the answer is yes. His first experiment took place in April of 2021, and even though it was relatively short, it was able to create 5.6 grams of oxygen, now that's not really a lot. It could keep a human alive on the surface of Mars for only 10 minutes. However, it is showing that we understand the science around how we can generate oxygen on the red planet. Now, MOXIE itself is designed to generate up to 10 grams of oxygen per hour of use. However, it is fairly energy intensive. Therefore, it's something that will only be tested every month or so and not something that will be constantly running on the rover, which is something to keep in mind as we talk about some of the concepts later in the video. Now you might be wondering, why is this so important to space exploration? Can't we just bring our own oxygen? I mean, it's not that heavy. And the answer is, well, technically yes. However, if we want to have longer duration missions, especially sending people to Mars, we need to start considering how we might be able to generate things at the Red Planet. NASA ran a study looking at four astronauts going to Mars. They would need roughly one metric ton of oxygen in order to breathe. And although that sounds like a lot, it's definitely enough that you could bring with you on a mission. However, there's a challenge. Once you get to Mars, if you want to launch back to Earth, depending on what type of rocket you have, you might need oxidizer or oxygen to get back to Earth. So even though you only need one metric ton to keep your astronauts alive, you would need 25 metric tons of oxygen to launch a rocket with four astronauts off of the surface of Earth. In fact, some estimates range anywhere from 30 to 40 metric tons of oxygen, which becomes infeasible, especially if you're trying to bring it all from Earth. Therefore, instead of having to bring 30 to 40 metric tons with you, 
Instead, you can send one large machine, which maybe weighs one metric ton, a few years ahead of time, and over time generates the oxygen that's necessary, puts it into an oxygen tank, and once you get there, you basically have many resources that you would need. It can also be utilized to develop water in the case that you have hydrogen available. So oxygen provides many benefits to human exploration beyond Earth. But let's tie this back into the MOXIE experiment. Even though MOXIE is small and technically can't even keep a human alive sustainably, we need to recognize why it's so important. Because we can run MOXIE during the day and at night, during different seasons throughout the Martian year, and understanding how it might be impacted by, say, a dust storm or different weather environments. Although this might not make too much of an impact on oxygen production, the more we understand about the process as a whole will be helpful when we're designing the larger scale mechanisms that generate oxygen for future missions when humans are involved. So it's pretty important to understand some of these critical components now so that we can improve the process for the future. Now you probably noticed that I skipped a pretty major component of this experiment, which is how it works. Now it can get into some complex chemistry or electrochemistry, I guess to be technical. However, I'll try and keep it fairly straightforward in how the entire process works by showcasing some of these animations. Now to begin, first the MOXIE experiment takes in Martian air through the scroll compressor, which we can see pointed out in this image. The compressor's job is to compress the air to one ATM, or one atmospheric pressure. Now one ATM is equal to one atmospheric pressure at sea level here on Earth, which again is roughly 150 times that of the atmospheric pressure on the surface of Mars where the Perseverance rover is. So that's just something to keep in mind. And this process actually takes up a lot of energy in terms of the overall production of oxygen, which you might want to remember when we come back to this later in the video. Essentially, the first part is compressing the Martian air, which again is predominantly carbon dioxide. From that point on, it's sent through a preheater to increase the temperature of the air to 800 degrees Celsius, which is incredibly hot. But this is the temperature that is needed in order to separate some of these oxygen atoms that are inside the carbon dioxide molecule. At this point in time, the very hot air is sent through the solid oxide electrolysis unit, or SOX. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that acronym right. But this essentially is where the magic happens. This is where we're able to separate the oxygen from the carbon dioxide molecules. So let's go step by step in how exactly this works. First of all, it's estimated that this phase will convert anywhere from 30 to 50% of the carbon dioxide to carbon monoxide and oxygen gas. And all we want to collect is the oxygen. So how are we going to separate it through this process? We can essentially see the carbon dioxide coming through and some of it breaking apart into CO and O. And this is essentially where the electrolysis part comes into play. When some molecules break apart, and in this case, the carbon monoxide and the oxygen, they have different charges, kind of like the sides of magnets. In this case, the oxygen atoms become negatively charged. So for example, if we were to run a current or create another charge, we could actually pull the oxygen atoms to a side and vent them out somewhere else. We're essentially using magnetism or charges to separate the two different molecules. And then the carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, and whatever else is going through can vent out the exhaust area. But then you might be wondering, this is a pressurized unit. What is stopping some of the other molecules from going out the oxygen port? I mean, there really isn't anything from stopping stuff from going that way. And you would be exactly right. That is why the design also has a filter included. But what is this filter? It's a special kind of ceramic called Scandia stabilized zirconia. Now I know what you're thinking. Where can I buy Scandia stabilized zirconia? And the answer is, you can buy it online, at least in powdered form for $735 and get 150 grams of it. But really, what is Scandia stabilized zirconia? The simplest way to put it is it's a filter or strainer that only allows oxygen molecules or oxygen atoms to go through the ceramic. It's not so much like a strainer that it's porous, 
but more it's a structure or a material structure that allows oxygen to freely move and restricts other molecules like carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide. So in this case, it's very useful to allow only oxygen to go through the one vent and reach the positively charged anode or region in which it will be collected. And at that point, as it's sent through the vent, the oxygen atoms will essentially bond with each other and create oxygen gas, which is what we use to breathe. So this is the entire process. But you might be wondering, as you're watching all these things go out the exhaust, there's a lot of oxygen atoms leaving. So why don't we increase the temperature and make all of the oxygen atoms go out through the oxygen vent? We can double, triple, or even quadruple the efficiency, depending on how hot we go. And the answer to that is, technically we could, but there is a major challenge with that. When we take carbon dioxide and steal an oxygen atom, we get carbon monoxide, and it's still a gas. When we take carbon dioxide and we steal both oxygen atoms, we get just carbon, which is also called soot. So as we steal both oxygen atoms, we're just going to be left behind with soot, which is no longer a gas, and it's just a solid. And this can get easily built up within the mechanism as a whole and could eventually destroy MOXIE. Now, not only is this something we don't want to do, but this is something that the engineers actually have to try and avoid because if this ends up happening too much within the experiment, then that could destroy MOXIE. So they have to be very careful with how they run the experiment, such that they don't create too much soot. So that was an overview of how the MOXIE experiment works. And if you followed along, now you have a basic understanding of how to generate oxygen on Mars, which I think is pretty fascinating. Nonetheless, we can go on to one of the last questions, which is, what does this mean for the future of human exploration and how we might be able to generate oxygen in the future? And this essentially is asking whether or not we can grow MOXIE. Can we just take the specifications and make it 100 times larger? And some parts of it, yeah. Electrolysis is used quite frequently in chemistry all across the world, not necessarily for carbon dioxide and oxygen, but for many other purposes. However, there are still some major challenges, and one of the biggest ones associated with generating oxygen on Mars is the compressor. Remember that part I talked about where we take the Martian air and we have to compress it 150 times in order to get it to the atmospheric pressure of Earth before we can heat it up? Well, that takes a lot of energy, and one of the most energy expensive components of the entire instrument. Meaning that if we want to scale that process up, the energy is just not going to be feasible for a human-based mission. Therefore, the design of the compressor needs to change depending on the constraints that are given energy-wise. So it'll be interesting to see what would be developed for a larger scale oxygen generator on the surface of Mars. But that's just something that engineers will have to decide in the future. Another component that might be challenging will be dust collection because as a generator gets larger, it's going to have to accumulate more and more dust and stop it from entering the machine. Therefore, being able to filter a generator on another world when no one's there could be quite challenging. So we'll have to see how exactly they approach that problem. And don't get me wrong, there's already methods of filtering out the dust now on MOXIE. However, there's a difference between generating 10 grams of oxygen per hour versus many kilograms of oxygen per hour. So again, these are all things we'll just have to wait and see what happens as further generators get developed. The last thing that I wanna mention is that this channel officially has a Discord server now. So if you check the description, you can click on the link and the first 50 members that sign up will be able to join the Discord. And a big thank you to the patrons of this channel that made that happen. By reaching 10 patrons on Patreon, that was the first milestone which was creating this Discord. So again, a big thank you to each one of you that helps support this channel financially. But again, with all that being said, if you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like and subscribing to the channel. But thank you for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.